Hi everyone, this is another episode of the Magic of Go series. And in this video, we're going to talk about a concept that's been bothering me for a long, long time, for years. It's this one thing responsible for the vital power of all the stones in Go. It's the key factor that determines the difference between living and dying. In other words, we're going to talk about eyes. What is it that constitutes an eye and what happens when the eyes are not there? Here we go. Have you noticed that Go always seems to be about exceptions? Why is that? They tell us that this is an absolute rule and then there's a tiny little exception to it. And this one is supposed to work 100% of the time and then sometimes it doesn't. And then they tell us right from the start that eyes always make our group stronger. A group with an eye is stronger than a group without one. And then we have this kind of capturing race, black to play. And uh, at this point, black can make an eye right here. But unfortunately, it's exactly this move that loses a capturing race. So the way to live here is not to make an eye. Black simply fills the liberty and connects here. And after this, if both sides fill the liberties, black has just enough liberties to Atari first and black wins. And even the eyes themselves, how do they work exactly? This is a clear eye in the middle of the board, but once we remove any two of the cornerstones, let's say these two, and replace them with two white stones, this is no longer an eye. Now this is a false eye, which in practical terms means that black has no eyes at all. And this all seems very simple and transparent when it's in the middle of the board like this, but once we move it just a little bit and add some of the opponent's stones, it could become a lot more confusing. Look at this position in the corner here. Black seems to be nonchalantly and comfortably alive with so many eyes, at first glance. But when you look closer, you see that black only has one real eye, this one in the corner. All the others are false eyes. And the stones can't escape, so black is simply dead. Now what if I told you that there's a way of living in Go that doesn't involve making two eyes? And no, it's not Seki. It's actual living with territory. It's all very straightforward and simple, so take out your notepad and write down the recipe. You find a little living group of your opponent, and then you surround it completely with your stones, making sure that all of your false eyes are linked to one another, and then you wait till it's all surrounded by your opponent's stones. And we get a little something like this. A black group in the middle is clearly alive with two eyes, and strong black stones on the outside. And what about the white stones that are kind of sandwiched between them? Are they alive or dead? It, they seem alive with two eyes, but when you look closer, you see that this is not really an eye. It's a false eye. It meets every definition of a false eye. These two cornerstones are removed and replaced with two black stones. And the same thing is true about this eye. So this white group only has two false eyes, and yet it's alive because black cannot force white to fill them. So as incredible as it seems, these white stones are actually alive. This kind of living is known as a two-headed dragon. But I think a more appropriate name should be a snake eating its own tail. The Ouroboros is a very ancient symbol that's been around in different civilizations for thousands of years. It stands for the cyclical nature of life, living, dying, and rebirth. And just like Ouroboros, this white group is arranged in a circle, and just because of that, it's alive. And I don't think I need to tell you how incredibly rare this thing is. Remember when we talked about Chosei, the eternal life, we said that an ancient book recommended getting some meat, fish, and wine to celebrate the occasion if it happened in one of your games. Well, if this thing happens in one of your games, throwing a party isn't going to cut it anymore. You have to splurge, go crazy, go skydiving, let off some fireworks, because you are going down in history. And now let's see an example of this happening in professional games. This game was played in Korea in 1967. It became quite famous and it was even published in Korean newspapers. Let's see what happened here. Black just added another move to make sure that these stones are indeed dead. And white now reinforces here, trying to attack these stones on the top. Black makes another jump. And one more. Now, if I'm white here, I would be thinking that some of my stones are going to die for sure. These stones don't look very much alive, and these stones are probably dead. I don't know what I would do here. But white is not worried at all. 
white wedges. And tries to connect. Black defends, white connects, black captures, white connects. Now black needs to take care of these stones, so black makes two eyes and white starts some action in the corner. It doesn't seem to be possible to live there, but actually because these stones are still a little weak, white can for example play like this, and this is threatening to attack them, black will have to defend and white can start this co to connect. So black defends against that immediately. Now white starts a series of maneuvers to try and get himself out of that corner. White makes a probing move here first. Black connects. A jump here. Black defends. And one more beautiful Tsuji. Black's shape here is not really perfect, so black has to defend. And while doing that, black makes a few ugly looking shapes. An empty triangle here. This. White connects. Black tries to prevent that, but white pushes once, connects here, and this black group is still not alive. So before living, black makes this exchange, another wedge. White connects, and after this, black makes another eye. White connects everything, but this connection is also threatening the safety of these five stones. So black needs to respond. And now white doesn't believe that these stones are going to die because big dragons never die. So instead of defending anything, white takes more profit with this Atari. Now black is going to try and make a co here to save these stones. And as a co threat, he will try to cut off all of the white stones in the center. So let's skip forward a few moves and see what happens in the end. We could say that Black's plan was a success. Black died with these stones, but as a co-threat, he managed to cut off all of the white stones. And those stones only have one eye, this one. This is not an eye, there's no eye here, these are false eyes, and yet the plan failed. Even though white only has one real eye, but Black can never force white to fill these two false eyes. And we'll get the shape that we saw before, the snake biting its own tail. Black could probably resign right here, but Black was probably so shocked and astonished to see what was happening in this game that Black played the game till the very end and White won by 7.5 points. So when you find yourself in a very difficult situation where you can't make two eyes or you can't make seki, remember that you can always follow this simple and easy and straightforward recipe and make life with only one eye or even with no eyes at all. Now it's time to solve some problems, and first let's see the solution to the problem from the previous video. So black plays inside, white has to connect, black extends. And here if white plays something like this, black adds a move and this is a bent four in a corner and white is dead. But this problem turned out to be more tricky than it had seemed, because actually white can resist like this. And this seems to be an even better option, because this move creates a cutting point in Black's position. Now if Black wants to kill, Black has to play here, White blocks, Black still makes it this, the bend 4 in the corner shape, but then now White can attach here, and it's going to be very difficult, or maybe even impossible, to keep White inside the corner. White will escape and live on the side. And some of our subscribers actually found this variation, so congratulations. But we counted both the original one and this one. And now one more problem. This is a bit of a standard shape. Black has two honeys on both sides, and black is supposed to be alive, no matter how white attacks. But white can try to be tricky and invade like this. Now black to play. How can black live? And I'll see you in the next video. This is Go Magic.